Okay, hello. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Victor Hackes. I'm going to talk to you about the streamer B API. Uh, one, year, one year later, what's been happening, what is, and what's going on, and what's next. Uh, work for this company, Igalia, which is a software developer cooperative, helping Intel in the open source technology center. Uh, so what it is, what it means, BAPI is, stands for Video Acceleration Application Programming Interface. It's a descendant of, of the XVA, XV, X, uh, DXVA, uh, the acceleration API developed by, Intel, by Microsoft, then take by Intel and developed by, by, for, for Intel. Um, basically, it is an API in specification for a client side where the, where the users or user applications can develop using this API to develop uh, video renderers or video encoding, video processing, processing. And there is also a spe an API specification for the driver, for the backend. So other implementers can implement their own drivers for their own hardware, for their own stuff, and just plug the, 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 the APIs. And also it's a library implementation under the MIT li license, and basically it only opens a, a driver, a backend, and register the, the callbacks and the, and the functions. You can get the code for the live ABA in that direction, but also you obviously you need the, the drivers. So what BAP can do for you, basically do video decoding, video encoding, video post-processing, which is resizing, changing formats, uh, adding some filters there, color balancing, and also can composite and render the image in the screen. Um, so the question is what drivers are available what you can use. Basically the, the main one, or the most developed one with more work on it is the Intel VA driver for Intel chipsets. And there is also a new driver called Ever Driver, which uh, not only uses the hardware acceleration components, but also has software decoding because they wanted to complete some uh, the BP BP9 for for certain architectures that don't have that don't, doesn't provide hardware for that. But also there are another big uh, driver which is being developed. It's a work in progress, but it's going fine for certain uh, cards. So there is the Mesa State Tracker for Gallium drivers. And nowadays, as far as I know, I, I, I haven't worked that much, but as far as I know, the Radeon uh, cards are working well for, for this uh, driver. Novo, as far as I know, is Julian, I don't know if you're around here, um, told me that Novo is working fine too, and there's for another uh, Adreno, uh, well, Fridreno driver in, in Mesa. And there are also another deprecated APA bridges. We basically, they bridge from one APA to another BAP, uh, for another APA. For example, the VDPOW to B, the VA bridge, and there is also a Power VR to VA bridge, and there is another, but these are deprecated. The problem is that distribution still packaging these drivers, and they are giving very bad experience to users, so we have to do something related to that. Uh, in the case, just to put that example about the, the, the Intel decoders, there is the chipsets, the Gavi Lake, Sky Lake, Broadwell, Haswell, and what are the, the decoders available depending on the chipsets? There is just simple matrix for that. There is, for example, uh, Sky Lake supports BP-8, but only in circ under circumstances. Um, there is a for the same for, for process of filters. You have format changes, uh, noise uh, uh, reduction, the interlacing, sharpening, color balancing, and skin, toler, skin tone enhancement. And you can see also which chipsets are related with which filters. Uh, and the list of encoders. Mm. Obviously, in the MISA uh, drivers, you will see another, another matrices, depending on the, on the, on the card. For example, this is a message stick tractor. You have, we have this, well, this uh, command called VA info, which, which tracks all the information that the, that the driver supports. And for example, for this, for Novo, you can see these variable length decoders for MPGs, VC1, H4, H264, and video post processing. Uh, for example, if you want to know which driver is supported and which the, 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 the driver you're using and the supported uh, encoders and decoders, you can use this. 
to comment. It's very useful. Um, so what's new? Well, what happened in this almost a year since now? Well, we have had uh, 390 commits, more or less, perhaps a few more in the last few years. And 19 contributors, I'm very excited about that because in the past we haven't had so many contributors and we have around, we'll have half a dozen and we are now around 20, that's, that's great. Thank you very much for all. Um, what's new? Well, we started with the VP9 support, the coder and decoder. It's only available in Cavi Lake. In Sky Lake it's available using this hybrid, hybrid driver, You're using this uh, software decoding, and all this does done, done by three, thanks. Uh, another big, big, big step is now that, and it was mentioned by Tim at the beginning of the, of the conference, is that now GStreamer VAP is part of the GStreamer project, so everything goes in the same releases, under the same schedule. We share the, 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 the infrastructure of GStreamer repository, the Boxilla. Uh, we have removed some stuff that we were doing not aligned to the GStreamer project, like this uh, library, public library that we were sharing. Uh, we removed the custom video parser that we had in the past, because now all the upstream parsers are do, uh, does do what, uh, what we want now. Uh, we share the GStreamer common tools for auto tools and GTK doc. Uh, this is wrong. Uh, um, thanks a lot for Tim and Sebastian for this, for, for his help, for their help. Uh, another big stuff that is important for users is what we have to rename it, the encoders. We change it from this structure to this more aligned to the GStreamer project, which is more intuitive. intuitive. Uh, okay. uh, we, have the, uh, we have split the decoders. We have in the past only one decoder. We share all the, the codecs. Now we have to split it it's following the rules of GStreamer for each uh, uh, codec. But still we have this BAPI decode bin, which is a bin uh, which has inside the, the decoder, the, v, the BAP decoder and the post-processor. This is useful because of, of the interlacing, you have to, to, to do this. So they're still there and still is how to plug by the code bin. And another stuff we have, we have add to the, to the core of GStreamer uh, the differentiation between the negotiation caps and the allocation caps. We have, we have some scenarios that we need a bigger caps, bigger memory caps in the allocation caps than the negotiated caps. So that problem, that brought some problems when mapping the surfaces into main memory. Now it's fixed into, well, just for, for 110. Uh, there are, we have uh, enhancements for encoders. Now we support, uh, constant bit rate support in H.265 encoder and low power encode in H.264. I was done by, by three. Uh, and as, as I was mentioned before, we have some problems with these drivers that not support. So we have decided to w make a wide list of drivers and we only support the Intel drivers and the MISA drivers are supported. The rest, which are the IP breaches, are, are, not, uh, are not valid. So basically what we do is if we detect that it's not a whitelisted driver, we just bail out and, on, and stop the registration of the, of the elements. So the users will never know if they are, they are using or they don't have this bad experience of being stopped because the, the driver doesn't support some issues and so now it goes to, to software. Um, there is a way to to override this and this export in this variable, just to VAP all drivers. So if you export that, you're on your own because you will be going to use uh, these unmaintained drivers. Um, well, plugin, uh, we have improved a lot of the plugin re registration because in the past we always register all the, all the plugins. Now we query to the driver what are the, the driver support and register only those uh, encoders and decoders. And to do that, in order to do that, we have to track the dependencies. It's, it's, it means that the, the user can change the, the driver or, or update the driver or uh, export or change even the, the, the hardware or change the display. So we have to track this uh, information in order to, to know if we have to re register or invalidate the, the register cache 
or not. So we follow this, uh, we track this, these dependencies. Basically, if the the nodes in the dev device in the devices are change uh, their creation date, basically every time you reboot your computer. Uh, if the driver shared object change, if all these variable environment variables change, also the cache is invalidated and registered again, and the, and the and the elements available are query again. Uh, so, for example, this is an example of what happens with with Haswell. So we only register the these elements. For example, you cannot see the VP8, VP9, the coders and encoders. So now the users know what they have when doing a just inspect. In the past, normally users see, oh, so oh, I have support for x264 and my hardware doesn't support it and I have problems, but now it fixes it in that way. Uh, what else? Well, we have improved the DMA buffer imp importation from upstream buffers because now we cache the surface, so now DMA uh, buffer importation is, is, is more efficient. Uh, we have uh, now Baby Pro can negotiate to tr caps the buffer transformation. In the past, we have to set the the height and width and and color transformation using uh, element properties, but now we can set it to through the caps negotiation, which is fine for users. We also add uh, thanks for Scott for that. Uh, we have add uh, reverse playback. The problem with reverse playback is what we have an, a limited number of surface because of the driver. They have to, and in reverse playback, we had to hold the whole group of pictures and to, in order to render it backwards. Uh, as we only have four, five, six uh, uh, surfaces available, we cannot hold the complete group of pictures. So we end up with a hack. Basically, we only keeping the first iframe in the GOP, and that's what's rendered. So the reverse backwards at least doesn't freeze as before, but you only see this <laughs> thing of when we're doing reverse playback. But at least it's usable. We have a bug for, for in, in haste it a little bit. And we also optimize the native GL texture upload. So in the past, when the GL image syncs giving a round robin way textures to upload the the, the image. So every time we receive a new uh, texture, we recreate an internal structure uh, using a, a, a delayed malloc, delayed malloc for every time. Now we just cache them in a in a in a hash, uh, in, in internal in internal cache, and and now we have an improvement from 30% usage of, of CPU. Now we are using 3%, 6% of CPU usage, which is great. Um, so what's next for the for the next year? What are the plans? This is well, this is still under, dis under discussion, but uh, this is more or less the plans. We have to support the DMA booth exportation to downstream. We have support for upstream, but we want to share the, the, the DMA booth instead of the surface of mapping the memory uh, to the downstream. And this is something that Julian has been doing down and is ready to merge just to fix some APIs and stuff, but it's already to merge in, in 1.11, so we will grade that. We have to improve the reverse playback, as I already mentioned. And this is very important. We have to add GST validation scenarios in order to, to find regressions before the release. We don't have that by the moment, but we have to have it. Uh, for encoders, we have to find a way to Configure the encoders using the CAPS negotiation for the profile, mostly, uh, because now the profile is decision in another way. We have to do that. There is books working on that. And we also have to provide uh, advanced intonings and more control options to, to encoders. We have the problem with that. Uh, we have to also, in the code bin tree, we have the way to support the hardware accelerated auto plugin, because the way how we work around this is using the BAPI decode bin, but we have to get rid of BAPI decode bin and find a way to decode bin to insert the BAPI post proc if the decoder is a BAPI one. We have to wait to negotiate this in the auto plugin under the decode bin tree mechanism. 
Uh, also, this uh, wild idea we have, we want to get rid of all our custom GL code and use the GSTGL API. So we can reduce greatly the, the amount of code we have in, in, GSTB, in, in GSTB API and reducing most of the APIs already done in, in thanks to Matthew, uh, in GSTGL. Another wild idea is the problem is in the past we implemented GSTB API using custom objects which are called GSTB API object or GSTB API mini object which are not based on GST object and neither GST mini object. So this was a way to work around certain uh, performance things. Uh, but nowadays it looks not good, not right. We are losing this GST trace that uh, uh, Guillaume talked uh, in, the, in the previous talk about for finding mem leaks and stuff. We have to change this uh, uh, as, as, as much as possible uh, the 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 base object we are inheriting. Nowadays, there's a bug for transforming the, the display, which is uh, the most important of the most yeah the, the base uh, class we are using the display to change it to to GST object and and expose it for this other future work that is to share the display the BA display and uh, several users needs to share they need to create their own B display and uh, share it to the pipeline. So they, they want to say this BA, this sync, I want to use the BA display, this other sync, I want to use this other display so I can composite by my own. So we have to, to, to add a way to the pipeline receive the BA display in the GST context and, and use that display for, for, for that part of the pipeline. In that way, we we could remove the, the, the display cache we have right now and support multiple BAPI syncs with different BA displays. Uh, and this is a work in progress too. And well, there's a long-term thing that nowadays we do the slice parsing. Every time we receive a new frame, we parse it again, even if it was already parsed by the, by the parser before. Because we need a cont uh, finer control of, of, of this parsing, we need to slice parsing that is not provided by the by the parser by the ele uh, parser elements uh, uh, in in upstream. Uh, there's the idea that uh, the the, par the parser also can share the slice information, so we cannot parse it again. Uh, but that's a bit tricky because we have to only activate it when the decoder needs slice information. So we have to send a message to upstream to say, I want to slice information. So th the parser will enable and share that information too. But sometimes we need more deeper, more co finer control in the in the parsing. So perhaps, I don't, it's, it's still, we, we have to see if it's possible to get rid of the slide parsing count in this type, just to maybe API. And yes, this is a note outside of GStream API. This is a new set of elements that are going to be upstream further in the next release. Uh, um, bef uh, after GST 1.10, that is GST MSDK, which is stands for Intel Media SDK, which is uh, not VAPI, but is some kind of related to VAPI. Uh, the main target is Windows, but still you can uh, install it in Linux with certain twist, tweaks in, in the configuration. You need some kernel patches and stuff like that. Um, right now we have only encoders, but uh, thanks to, to Joseph. Uh, and also there is uh, working decoders, thanks to uh, Scott too. He's working on that. And as I say, we'll be uh, the, uh, added to upstream as after release 110. As I say, this is not quite related, but it's somehow related. And yeah, questions? We are almost in time. Uh, any questions, doubts? Yes? Yes, that's the idea. They asked me the uh, GSTM's decay will be available in 1.12. That's the, that's the idea. Right? Another question. Dun, 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 dun. This has been a bit easy. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
uh, examples. Uh, well, I can show you a, 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 a video playing GSTVL, but I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but uh, example code. Ah, uh, no, well, I don't have example code because that code of sharing the GSTVA display, if you are, if you are mentioned about that, is it's not there. It's not. We have just patches how to change it, the 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 base class, but still we have to define which what are the public API we want to expose. We have to if we want what to we want to only expose the creation of the B API of the which we want to give more the user more more control of, on the GST, but it's not defined it yet. It's still in the working progress. This. Okay, they're asking me if we can use it in headless servers or only in desktop. You can use it in headless servers. There is a GSTB API sync using uh, DRM. Yeah, well, yes, yes, leave KMS DRM, which is the kernel, so you can uh, assign to a render node in the in the DR uh, infrastructure in the kernel and grab this and store it in a in somewhere. Or do that. Give it, yeah, give them the surfaces and. Yes. Ah, that's a good question. Uh, Joseph is asking me if we can use GStream Ruby API in a system with different hardware cards, uh, uh, different uh, cards and different uh, GPUs. Uh, we need to add a way to select which. Uh, graphics card to use or which uh, backend to use if we have multiple systems. There is a way we can use, we can change the display if we are using X or weight display, if we are using Wayland uh, or, or setting the, the, the video renderer, but it's not an easy way to to select, okay, I want to render in this in this, uh, in this backend of this other backend. Yeah, this is a missing part. To way to do it easily, but perhaps with this, just uh, ex exposing the GST display, the user can create the display in their backend and share that to the to the to the pipeline. That would be the idea. It's not it's not it's not be possible to do it in through the command line, but it will be possible to do it through BAP uh, through API just to be API. Yeah. Well. Thank you very much.